Hello, let's discuss Marshall's rules of derived demand. Labor demand is an example of a derived demand. The demand for labor depends on the demand for the product that labor produces. The demand for automobile workers, for example, depends on the consumer's demand for automobiles. Marshall's rules of derived demand explain the factors that affect the elasticity of labor demand. Rule 1. Labor demand is more elastic the greater the price elasticity of product demand. A firm with greater market or monopoly power in the product market will have more inelastic demand for its good, so firms' demand for labor will be less elastic. A firm with less market power in the product market will have more elastic demand for its good, so the firm's demand for labor will be more elastic. In other words, wage changes will cause larger changes in employment levels. The more consumers cut back on consumption from a higher price, the greater the price elasticity of demand, and therefore the larger will be the drop in the output and employment of the firm. An implication is labor demand is more elastic in the long run because product demand is more elastic in the long run. Rule 2. Labor demand is more elastic the greater labor share of total cost. We have two scenarios. We have two firms here. In firm 1, labor cost represents a large share or fraction of total cost. And in firm 2, labor cost is a small share of total cost. The labor share in scenario one is 80% of the total cost, $80 divided by the total cost. If wages increase 20%, labor cost rises to $96. So 80 going to $96 is a 20% increase. And total cost will rise from $100 to $116. So total costs represent the $96 plus the $20 of capital cost. This is a 16% increase in total cost. In scenario two, labor share of total cost is only 10%, the labor cost divided by the total cost. If wages increase 20%, labor costs rise to $12. Going from 10 to $12 is a 20% increase. And total cost then will only rise from $100 to $102. That's going to be the $12 plus the 90. This is only a 2% increase. So a wage increase in this case will have a smaller effect on reducing employment than in case one. Rule three, labor demand is more elastic the greater the substitutability of other inputs. The greater the elasticity of substitution, the easier it is to replace labor with other inputs following a wage increase, making labor demand more elastic. An isoquant that is straighter makes it easier for the firm to substitute between inputs. With perfect substitutes, straight-lined isoquants, the elasticity of substitution is infinite. It is possible to completely substitute away from labor and use all capital following a wage increase. With perfect complements or fixed proportions production process, the elasticity of substitution is zero. It is not possible to substitute more capital for labor following a wage increase. And rule four, labor demand is more elastic the greater the supply elasticity of other inputs. This rule is an extension of the third rule in which it was implicitly assumed that using more capital does not increase the price of capital. However, if firms use more capital, that will lead to an increase in the demand for capital, and that could cause capital prices to rise. So an increase in the demand for capital may lead to higher prices for capital. These higher prices make it less appealing to substitute capital for labor following a wage increase. If the supply curve of capital is less elastic or flatter, an increase in demand from firms wanting to use more capital puts little upward pressure on the price of capital, making it easier to substitute labor for capital so labor demand would be more elastic in this case. With an inelastic supply curve for capital, a uh, rather steep looking supply curve for capital, labor demand is less elastic. Okay, that's it.